So how to buy your first house using an FHA loan, Matt Garland, NMLS number 58700, better known as MG the Mortgage Guy. Welcome back to the channel. We are live. We are blessed. Thank God for another day. The first question is, what is an FHA loan? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we starting this too. This is how we're starting it. Yep. All right. So yeah. what is an FHA loan? An FHA loan, Federal Housing Administration. It came out in 1934 after the Great Depression. Um, FHA is, people think it's a first time home buyer loan. Right. Which, I always thought it was that for a long time. No, honestly. it's not. That's just marketing. Okay. Right. But FHA, like all loans, are is a tool. FHA just happens to be one of the most popular tools out there because low credit, low down payment requirements. Okay. So FHA, again, stands for Federal Housing Administration, and it is a loan not for first-time home buyers, but it's a loan for anyone who's looking to purchase a primary residence. Pri so primary residence. That's the key. Not investment properties. Not not investment properties. You can purchase a owner occupied multifamily, no more than four units. Okay. Yes. But it has to be primary residence. Owner occupied meaning you're living in the crib. Correct. Okay. Owner occupied. Right. Not, Just wanna, yeah, yeah, not no, I'm gonna get know. mail sent there. <laughs> okay. Right? Not none of that foolishness. Okay. Okay. So, owner occupied. So what kind of um what kind of down payment should I have if I'm going to um, use an FHA loan? What kind of down? Well, the minimum down payment is 3.5% of the sales price, right? So okay. if you're talking a hundred thousand loan, I just want to use easy numbers. Three and a half percent is $3,500 of a hundred thousand. Right. Right. Um, that's 35, 3.5%. So you have to, you have to, um, my phone keeps ringing. What, what was the question? You said about down payment? I'm sorry. This is live. This is what happens. Yeah, right? bro, wake up, man. Come on. Bro, Look at it's, this been a, it's, it's, it's been a long weekend and my, and my phone keep ringing. Let me put this on Do Not Disturb. Yeah, please, please. All right, let me, let me um, get focused for the, for the show. All so right. how much money should you have or what kind of down payment do you need I just told you, 3.5% down payment. Okay. Right? So, th so depending on the loan amount. Right. 500,000, 700,000, three and a half percent down of whatever that is. Then you have your closing costs on top of that as well. But I'm pretty sure we're going to get into more yeah, details. Yeah, we have some that. questions about that too. Now, 3.5% okay. is that is that based on any, like that's everybody across the board? That's the minimum down payment. That mm -hmm. doesn't mean that's going to be your down payment that you're going to qualify with. Okay. So there's a big difference, right? When you look at any loan program and they say the minimum down. Yes. Right? That doesn't mean you're going to qualify for a loan with putting that minimum down. Right. So in some cases, you might need to put 10% down depending on the size of the house and what your overall debt to income ratio is. Okay. But the requirement is a minimum of 3.5% down payment. Okay. Um, can you get assistance with this down payment? Yeah. So you can do down payment assistance, right? Um, you can do, you can get a gift. Okay. From a family member. Uh, they have programs out there. Like some like even if you work in like healthcare and stuff like that, depending on the hospital, they might even have assistance for you that you can get as well. Mm -hmm. So there's so many different little things that you can do if you don't have all the capital where you can kinda I well, I don't want to call it raise the money, but you can essentially raise the money with down payment assistance. You can get um if you use your 401k, you can get a gift. Right. You know, so it's things you can use if you don't have the physical money. Now, if you don't have the physical money and you get a gift, is there any procedures that you have to follow in order to have that money in your bank account? You know, Absolutely. So when you get a gift, so you have to get a gift letter. Okay. Right? So you have to get a gift letter, and the lender has to see the money's coming from the, whoever's the donor mm -hmm. into your account. So this is what I want to tell you guys. A lot of y'all be trying to do this foolishness, right? <laughs> you be having mattress money, right? and then you want to take your mattress money, give it to mommy, mommy deposits it, and then sends you the money right? as a gift. Okay. That, that don't work. Why, why doesn't that work? Because we have to, so mommy has to have, or daddy, or whoever you get your gift from, we have to see their bank account 
and we have to see that they have the money in their account already. For how, for how long? Doesn't, it Doesn't could just be the most recent okay. bank statement, right? So if you're trying to get a gift of $10,000 from them and they don't have $10,000 in their account that they're using to wire you the money, the bank was going to look at that like, wait a minute, where did this deposit come from? Right, right. So always when you get a gift, make sure that they have money. So that way when we paper trail it, we're not seeing any large deposits that can, you know, hurt your um, transaction. Is there a way around that where you can just be like, oh, like a service? Maybe you, like, let's say I'm a videographer and I, I shot a video from my mom. That's yeah. income now. Okay. You see what I'm, I'm, I'm saying? I'm just saying this is how people think sometimes. So, but, you know, try no, to, good you question. Know. That's income now. So now, if but even then, if you have any large deposits that go into your account, we have to document where that money has come from. Okay. So now that can be used as part of your cash to close because you're, it's working income and capital that's coming in. So now in your situation, it's a little bit different because now if you're a business owner and you're using business funds to buy this house for down payment or closing costs, mm -hmm. now we need to get a CPA letter basically stating that the money that you're using for this transaction doesn't negatively, negatively impact the standing of your business. Right. Right? So yes, can that monies come in as a videographer or anything you're doing as a self-employed person, yeah. and we paper trail it, then yeah, because you're running the business, right? Okay. But if it's in your personal name, right, and you got a large deposit, and you didn't document that, hey, I have my one W-2 job, but I have this other income here too, and but you're not putting it on your loan application, now we have to paper trail. Like, all right, how long have you really been self-employed in this, that, and the third? So it's a lot that can come in it. Like I try to just tell people, keep it clean. Okay. Keep it as clean as possible. All right, cool. Um, you might want to sit back a little bit because you're out of focus. Just, uh, oh. just an FYI. <laughs> Those could be good clips right there, but they're blurry now because uh, they're not blurry. <laughs> yeah, you're out, of, you're out of focus on that one, bro. They're not. They're not blurry. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, man. Um. All right. So, how do you calculate your uh, debt to income ratio? How do you calculate your debt to income ratio? Yeah. And what is DTI? Because that's one of the most important factors. As you stated uh, earlier, when we were well, speaking. DTI is DTI, debt to income ratio. Right. So, all right, when lenders are qualifying you for a loan, we're using your gross income, especially if you're W. Now, this, I'm going to just speak to a W 2 person right now. Okay. I'm not going to speak to self employed because it's a whole different story. Right. So, from a W 2 employee, we're using your gross income to qualify. Gross income. Gross income. Got it. So we're not using your net. Remember, your net is after you pay your taxes and okay. then what you're left over after. So we're using your gross rental income. So I'll just use an easy number. Let's just say you make $120,000 a year, $10,000 a month. Okay. Right? So we're looking at your gross income, and then we're looking at what are the minimum payments that are on your credit report. Right? Okay. So... We're not looking at your balances. So you can have a $50,000 car, mm -hmm. but if the payment's $250, we look, we're taking that number. Is that on everything across the board? Phone bill? Like... Your phone bill's not on your credit report. Oh, anything on your credit report. So just key credit thing, cards, credit thing cards, thing and card. okay. credit report. Gotcha. Not everything that you're paying, because childcare is not on your credit report. Got gotcha. you. You know what I'm saying? Car okay. insurance is not on your, on your credit report. So it's still, so technically there are things that aren't in your credit report, but then you can qualify for a credit, but you may not even be able to afford it still. Huh. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> There's a difference between eligibility and affordability. Right. Right. Eligibility doesn't mean nothing because can you afford it? Because you're going to have, you got to eat. Right. Like your, your whole foods bill is not on your credit report. Mm hmm you know, your insurance is not on your credit report. Your child care is not on your credit report. Hell, just for you, if you're going, you going out, it's not on your credit report. You still have to live. Right. Your, your cell phone, your utilities of the house, none of these things are shown on your credit report. So that's why I always speak about eligibility versus affordability and don't be house rich and cash poor because... The way the lender is qualifying you, again, is off your gross income. You're not taking home $10,000 a month. You're taking home probably $6,500. Yeah. 
but we're qualifying you based off the gross. The gross income. So you're going to get approved for, you're going to be able to get approved, but does that mean you can still afford it? So now we take all those minimum payments, and let's just say those minimum payments come up to $1,000 a month. Okay. Right? And then now you have your mortgage payment. Let's just say you're buying a $500,000 house in, in Long Island. That might be a $4,000 monthly payment a month. Right. Right? So now you have that 4000 plus your 1000 That equals 5000 So if you divide 5000 by 10000 it's basically 50%. Right. So that's your 50% debt-to-income ratio right there. But remember, I just said, you probably taking home 6500 Yeah. So if your bills are $5,000, not even including your utilities, food, gas, like child care, right. you only have $1,500 left over. For the month. For the month. <laughs> your house rich and, and cash, cash poor. poor because that 1500 is gone. Right. Once you go out one night in New York City, it's over. Yeah, it's expensive in New York. So DTI, DTI people is the most important thing. This is what I want to tell you guys. You got to understand that it doesn't matter what the bank is going to approve you for. A bank will approve you with that number is because they're not looking for your affordability. Right. The bank, that's not their job. It should be. And good loan officers will speak up and tell you, no, you shouldn't buy this. Right. Right? Shout out to all the good loan officers. <laughs> but the people who are just trying to push you to make quotas and sales and make money, they're not going to tell you this. They're going to say, all right, whatever. Right. But that's why it's important for our audience to know these things going hand. So now with debt to income ratio, with an FHA loan, FHA is very generous and forgiving when it comes to debt to income ratio. You can go up to 55% on your back end, right? So there's two ratios. You have a housing ratio and you have the full debt to income ratio. Your housing ratio is your front ratio. It's basically your income and, and, and the expenses. And then the full DTI includes the income, your credit report, and the housing, right? Okay. Included into it. So if you had a 55% back end debt to income ratio, that's kind of like the max where FHA would go. Now, some lenders might have overlays where they say, you know what, you at 50% is our max. If you had a lower credit score, right? Because remember, FHA, you can go as low as 580. Some banks would go down to five. Technically, FHA doesn't have a credit score requirement as long as you have above 500. But that doesn't mean lenders are going to do it, right? You have yeah. a handful that will go below 550. But a lot of them are now starting to come out with 550 credit scores, but I would say, generally speaking, 580 is the minimum credit score okay. for an FHA loan. So a lender with their overlays might say, you know what, since you got the 600 or 580 credit score, we don't want you to have a back end of 50% because you're too risky because because of your credit history. So we might cap you at 42%. That's an income ratio. So it's very important that you need to know is what what does your profile look like? Mm -hmm. And then the lender that you're working with, what are their qualifications? And what are their requirements? So now if you're going with a high debt to income ratio deal, you again you have to remember huh, you're you're in a bad position because you're maxing yourself out. Right. And you should never max yourself out at that. Because remember, a fifty percent debt to income off your gross is really like seventy five percent off your net. Right, Eighty percent right. off your net. Right? So you just gotta be mindful of that when you're out here home shopping. Is there any way to prevent or any way you can like kind of like look at your expenses and everything you have going on to kind of know <coughs> if you're ready to actually purchase this house or like what can you what can you do to kind of you know know that you're able to do this? What can you do to know that you're able to do this in yeah. terms of can you afford it or not? Right. I mean everybody wants to get a crib at some point so like Well you gotta be realistic with yourself. First and foremost, right? Like, be realistic. Like, you know what your bills are. Right. You know what you have to pay. So, ultimately, at the end of the day, if you trying to take off money you can chew, then you're going to set yourself up for failure. So, I firmly believe you shouldn't, you shouldn't buy a house when you're maxed out because you're a foreclosure away, in right. my opinion. 
I think I think that's where maturity comes in too, right? When you are purchasing real estate, you have to be mature and you have to be able to look yourself in the mirror and say, you know, can I really afford this? Because the bank gonna give you the money, man. They gonna say, hey, go house shopping. We want you all about houses, <laughs> right? But they ain't going when you start making the payments, they're gonna get your ass out of there too. Yeah, yeah. So I think what can you do is just be mature, be an adult. Like this is an adult situation and, and you really know all your bills are outside of what we see on your credit report. So just be responsible. It's the best thing that anybody can do to prepare for home ownership. It's just be mature and be responsible. So now let's say if you um, are not able to, well, I'm not even sure if it's you're not able to qualify, but let's say if you want a co-signer or you need one, is that ever happened with the FHA loan where they say you need to have somebody co-sign or that's just like an option that a buyer would have? Yeah, so you can get you can get co-signers. Okay. Um, co-signers are allowed with FHA loans. Um, I don't see too many. So you have like you have non-owner occupied co-signers, and then you sometimes you have co-borrowers. Co-borrowers, right? Yeah, right. Okay. So yeah, so you so if like you and your girlfriend are looking to buy a house together move in it together you'll be considered a co-borrower okay right but if mom needs to sign and co-sign the deal because maybe your dti is not there whatever the case may be and we now need to put them on but they're not owner occupied they're not occupied co-signer okay right so it's a little bit different right yeah because now they're co-signing it they don't really have the ownership in the property but they have the responsibility of the debt so now I'm W-2. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm on W-2. I'm self-employed, right? Mm -hmm. So for self-employed people, um, what do we have to have in order in order for us to be going, you know, through the home buying process? So I know for sure for off the off the bat, it's two years of income, right? Correct. And so what, what everybody is two years of income. Consistent though. W-2, W-2, and then consistent. self-employed, self-employed. Self-employed, yeah. But also if you're in college, right? And I don't think I never said this before. Um mm -hmm on our channel. So like if you are in college, your your college history is now your employment. So someone who's who's going to school right now, they mm -hmm. graduate with a degree in marketing. Okay. They did four years, they have enough money saved, they have the credit, and they just got a new job. Right? Now they've been at the job for a, a month, two months, they got thirty days worth of pay stubs. Now we can use that four year college degree as their work history. And then boom, they don't have to wait until they work for um, two years in order for them to get approved how, for a mortgage. How do you even do that? I just told you. Like, <laughs> what? How is that possible? Like, I just told you. That's the guidelines. That's, that's what, allowed. Yes, yeah, allowed. If you are in college and you graduate and you want to buy a house and you have a job and you can document oh, your you appointment. Okay, right, right, okay. Yeah, you have to go, so you can't just graduate college yeah, and just say, saying, hey, let's go step. buy a house. <laughs> you missed that part, too. Yeah, I was looking at <laughs> Yeah, so when you use your college as your, <laughs> as your employment history and you have a job. In college? No. Or anywhere? No, I'm, all right. Your four-year college is your, your job. That's why I said, how do you, how do you... When you graduate, now you get a job at X, Y, and Z marketing firm. Okay. And now you can show that offer letter, which shows your salary, your start date. Mm -hmm. And now a bank will, if you qualify with the DTI, DTI requirements, the bank will fund that deal under FHA guidelines. Have you done a lot of loans like that? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. I didn't go to college, so that's why I'm like... I dropped out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. But that can happen. It happens all the time. Yeah, that's dope. So, so all you college students, you need to like learn this game so that way you can go out here and buy real estate. Yeah, that's dope. I, I didn't even know that. Well, you, so, learn, you learn something new every day. <laughs> so um, now on your credit, right? I don't know if we spoke. You spoke briefly on credit scores. It's 580 credit score. Um, and what do you guys look at? Or what does an underwriter look at when... Well, first of all, we got like 200 plus people in here. Y'all need to like this video, <laughs> throw some gems if you're getting some information. And if this has been valuable to you so far, please throw some gems in the comment and make sure you guys like this video. We ain't got enough likes on here right now. All right. <laughs> That's first things first. Uh, what was your question again? Um, 
So, um, what was my question? Yeah, what the oh, hell? Oh, credit score. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm like back and forth. I want to have it on the computer, but you want to see yourself, so it's kind of. I, I got to like, look at myself and yeah, look at the. But it's comments. distracting me from like. All right, so, Bro, just get your shit together. Um, so credit score. <laughs> like, credit score. Doing? Credit score. Right. Uh -huh. Five eighty credit score. Um and correct. What do you guys look at? Because I know I heard something about an average of or the, you take the middle score. Or something so like yeah. That? So credit score. So there's three, um, credit scores, credit bureaus, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. So we use the middle of the three scores to qualify someone. Okay. So let's just say you have a 600, a 650, and a 700 credit score. I'm going to ask all of y'all this. So Cloud, you have a six... I'm asking all y'all, and y'all need okay. to type the answer <laughs> in the chat, okay? If, if you have a 600, a 650, and a 700 credit score, what is your middle score? Can I answer or no? Let okay. them type in chat right. first. Do, 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 do. Quiz time, students. <laughs> quiz time. Pop quiz. If you have a 600, a 650, and a 700, what is your mid score? Type it in chat, please. I got to get that Jeopardy sound. You do. It's probably copyright, though. All right. We got, uh, we got, we got, I think somebody was trolling and put 700. I don't know. Oh, God. <laughs> well, you say middle score. Yes. So, middle score of the three. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So it's 650. 650. Right. All right. That is your middle score that the lender will use for qualifying purposes. Okay. Now, we're also going to look at your credit report. We're going to look at your payment history, how long the trade lines have been open for. Mm -hmm. Do you have any collections or anything like that? Okay. Um, so we're looking through your credit report um, to see what you got going on. Because if you can't pay your Verizon bill, what makes you think you can get a mortgage or pay a mortgage? Right? Yeah. Um, so we look through the credit report, make sure everything lines up there. And there's always opportunities on people's credit report to boost their scores, too. Right. Right. So a lender can do what's called a rapid rescore. Have you ever heard of a rapid rescore before? I've never even heard of Type that. in chat, yes or no. Have you guys ever heard of a rapid rescore? Yes in chat or no? Before that, though, you said collect. So what kind of collections are do you guys look at? Like are medical, at, are medical stuff on there too? Like typically, I don't think medical shows up on your thing no more. Oh, that's right. I think that's right. some that's new right. laws that came out that, that takes that off. Okay. But if you have judgments when we run a title search, even if it's not on your credit report, it'll come up in title search. Okay. All right. So we got a lot of people saying no. Yeah. Never they never heard. heard of a rapid rescore. Well, by golly, thank God that you subscribe to my channel so that way I can <laughs> teach you these things because you guys need to know this stuff, right? So when a lender runs your credit and we're looking at your credit report, for the most part, right? Not every lender probably offers this service. Mm -hmm. um, but here at Garland Mortgage Group, we definitely do. This thing can be a little bit expensive, too, and I'm going to break it down. Now, we'll have, like, it's a system. I'm not going to give, because I, mean, I don't want to promote the companies or nothing like that. They don't pay me. But <laughs> we have the system, and in the credit reporting system, it will tell us areas of opportunities for where we can boost your credit 10 points, 20 points, 30 points, whatever it is. Okay. So we run it through the system, and it's a charge, right? Right. Um, for us to do this, um, some lenders will eat the cost of it. I'm gonna some, say who pays for that, yeah. Yeah, some will eat the cost of it, some won't, okay. right? But now it'll come back and it'll tell us, oh, pay down this, pay down this, pay this off, do this, and these scores will boost up t to these. Okay. Right? So now we go back to you, the borrower, and say, look, I ran it through the system. It's telling me for me to get you to 700 from your 650. For your mid score, if we do X, Y, and Z, and you show give me proof that it was done, letters from the company on a letterhead, et cetera, and giving us updated account information, now I can submit this back to our credit company, who now will go and update the credit bureaus, right? And then they update the credit bureaus, and then now, boom, a new score populates. How accurate is this as opposed to, like, you know, those... Those nah, apps that have all those it's, credits. It's, it's pretty accurate. That's if dope. you if you do everything that it says, like give or take a point of five, like but you're gonna be in that ballpark Damn, of, that's of what the system will come I back. Never, I never knew that. Nah, rapid rescore is golden, but it can be expensive now from a lender perspective, right? 
and this is sometimes, this is why lenders probably don't speak about this a lot because now if you got, let's just say five items. Okay. That we got to update. Now, mind you, that's five items, each items on each credit report. So that's three. Like, mm -hmm. so it's really like we're updating like 20 different items because we got to go to each three credit each bureaus three credit bureau, right. for one item. Next one, right? Right. They charge us for this. Per, like per item or? Like, yeah, per update, per item. Per update, wow. Per bureau. Damn. Okay. Yeah, so, so it, it can could get, be, it could be pricey. It, it can, it, I, I've seen some like a thousand dollars, you know what I mean? Like the bill come back, cause, but that was a lot of work that had to be done. But you know, it might be a couple hundred dollars, but it's worth every penny. But what kind of clients are you doing this for? Because you have a lot if of If you have on. clients who have lower credit scores and you're trying to get them to the next level, even if you have a client that has 700, 720, you're trying to get them to the next 10, it's only one little thing, just pay down. Hey, is your Amex paid off yet? Mm, Do you paid it off okay. yet? Oh, cool, give me the proof. Let me update this real quick. Because now yeah. if I get this, I get you 20 more points and I'll get you a better interest rate. Yeah, that's dope. It's called strategy. It's called understanding the dynamics of what's going on here and then you'll be able to now win a deal or from a consumer perspective they get a better interest rate rapid so. rescore ladies and gentlemen <laughs> rapid rescore this yeah. is why you need to work with Garland mortgage group <laughs> i'm trying to tell you yeah. flowermg.com book a consultation like what are y'all thinking it's probably because he's not in a suit it's probably not, but look, <laughs> look how I'm many people said no. They didn't never heard of a rapid rescore I've before. Never, I've, I've never even. And I'm pretty sure half of these people done spoke to some loan officer in their life before. That's more like back end stuff, though. Pause, you know? Yeah, super pause. But it's not, <laughs> it's not really as front end because you need to be able to know the information. Because if you got 660 scores and, you, you, and there's an opportunity, yo, let's. You don't really need to do quote unquote credit repair. Right. You just need to pay some shit off. I, what I always say, the best credit repair is pay your bills. So now can we as people have access to this or only no. only if you have to be licensed no. basically? You can't have access to it. Okay. It's for us. All right. Just asking because I'm sure some people are curious about that. Um now can all lenders approve you for the minimum requirements of a FHA loan? Let's say if you have the minimum requirements like the five eighty. Can you like well, most lenders... No, because most lenders have overlays, right? So overlays so overlays are guidelines on top of the, the FHA guidelines. And overlays are in place to protect the bank, okay. right? And whatever their risk tolerance is. So a bank might say, we don't want no 580 credit score borrowers. Our minimum credit score is 620 regardless. Okay. They can do that, Right. Um, so getting you approved for the maximum loan amount, first of all, loan amounts are different in every county across America for FHA, depending on where you live. Um, so can a lender get you approved for a high, the maximum? Yes, if you qualify DTI-wise, which, right. we, which we broke down earlier in this video. But if you want to find out what your max loan amount is in your area, you can just Google it. Matter of oh, fact, actually, we, we actually, yeah. <laughs> that was a little later, but you want to get that now, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you don't fucking want to answer the questions. <laughs> like, all right, so we can do the. I'm, yeah. I'm going with your all flow. Right, so, uh, all right, so let's get to um, let's show the loan limits here, which we have. All right, so we have uh, FHA mortgage limits, right? I'm not sure which website this is. This is HUD.gov. That's right? HUD.gov, right? Okay. So you can go to HUD.gov. Tooks is going to put it in the description. Um, as well. So you can go to HUD.gov and you can find out what your FHA mortgage limits are. And it's very simple, right? So you come on here and you type in your information. Only thing you need to put is whatever state and the county name. So Tooks, put in New York and let's just do Suffolk County. Yeah, we already have Suffolk on here. So and but gonna... also, Larry, before you send, before you do anything, on the bottom, y'all, that bottom left, it says uh, calendar year. What does it say? Yeah, uh, limit year. Limit year. Make sure it's for the recent year that you're in. Because you see how the drop down yeah. has other years. So always make sure that's set to 2023 or the year we're in. Right. And then you just hit send or whatever. All right, so we hit send. Yep. We're in Suffolk. This is New York, Long Island. Yep. So if you don't want all the different states that have a Suffolk County to come up, that's why you got to specifically put your state. Right. Right, in this one you didn't put the state, you just put the county. Right. That's why I brought up Massachusetts and New York and some of Because there's other. different counties. Yeah. Same name. So you see in New York, 
for a single family. New York is considered a high cost area. Right. Right. So in New York, we can go up to one million. What's that? One million eighty nine. Yeah. One for uh, yep. one family. Uh, one family. Yep. One point three now nah, almost one point four million for a duplex. Almost one point seven million. Like one six five for three. And look at that bad boy at the two million. Two million for a four family. Absolutely ridiculous. The amount of money you can get with with, with these loans. Yeah, that's pretty. That's and pretty still intense. put three and a half percent down. What's your little? What's your six hundred credit score? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you can still do all of this. Let's go from another state. Let's talk. Let's go to Georgia or something like that, right? Let's put that information in. So we could do all states here, or just put Georgia. Yeah, just put Georgia, so that way we don't bring up a bunch of different things. Let's put Cobb County, C O B B. So let's put in Cobb County, right? Let's send it. Hit send. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you see how Cobb County one family is only five ninety two. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But actually, that's great because this used to be a lot less, you know, a couple years ago. Right. That just means the, the in the government they change the loan limits every single year as home prices appreciate this, that, and the third to make it more accessible for home buyers to get lower down payment loans and et cetera, et cetera, to keep the economy going. But you can see in Cobb County, you can get 1.1 million on a four family, right? It's not as high as New York. What's a four family look like in Georgia though? I, I don't know. Interesting. It could look like whatever. You can yeah. get up to a million, it don't matter. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm no, saying? still crazy. And that's only if you qualify. Only if you qualify. That's pretty dope. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's how you find your loan limits. Oh my gosh, these overlays. Jeez, man. Tooks Productions. <laughs> Leave it up to Tooks. Jeez. Y'all. All right. We got almost right. 300 people so, in here. I need them to like the video and drop some more gems because <laughs> we're giving them a lot of information. Yeah. We got to keep reminding people to like the video, please. Drop some gems if you're learning something um, through this conversation that Tooks wanted to have. All right. So let's talk about closing costs because I actually like never heard of closing costs up until i i think maybe a couple of years ago because <laughs> usually you only hear about this when you get to the closing table right or if you have a good loan officer like yourself then you would hear about this but most people think they have to save up the money for the house have a down payment they don't even think about it. i've never heard any of my friends talk about some closing costs so what are um the what is the amount of closing like closing costs money i guess or money you should have prepared for this so closing costs are standard on every single loan you're going to have fees. You have to pay people, mm -hmm. right? No one does nothing for free. Right. So typically I like to use a 5% um, calculation for closing costs. So 5% of the sales price. So if it's a 100,000 sales price times 5%, $5,000, right? So 5%. 5%. Okay. 500,000 times 5%, 25,000. Okay. Should be somewhere in there. And depending, and, but there's a lot that comes with closing costs, right? Um, matter of fact, you got the thing. Let's bring up the other thing, the, the loan estimate. You didn't, remember you went to the website and you said page one, page two? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm like, wait, what? I have no website. Have you been drinking this week, <laughs> Tooks? <laughs> nah, I actually wasn't. I was just busy. Uh, all right, so we have a loan amount right here. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> this guy, yo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right okay all right we back okay can they, can they see this um i i made it big so um pause i made it big though so they can kind of like bro I, i'm looking at this on youtube i can't even see this well that's why i said to you you're not gonna be able to see it that's why i want to put it up but if you guys can see it type yes in chat if you can't then um we'll leave a <laughs> we'll leave a link in the description <laughs> oh my god so you, i mean the floor is yours my friend you can talk about whatever you want on here I mean, this thing looks mad small, so I can't really see it. But look, this is what a loan estimate looks like for what you can see here. They said they can see it, so whatever, right? So in a loan estimate, it's going to break down things. So on the top part, is basically going to have your information, the, the program you're doing. Damn, I wish we can see this better so we can really, like, zoom in. There's a website. Um, you know what? Because oh, that, 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 that's like an image, right? Yeah, this is the image. No, 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 no. Let me, let me, let me, let me get, let me just get this real quick. Cause I mean, what's this, wrong with this? You could just break this down. No, trust me, bro. You want to, you, you, you. Yeah, you, but you, you're going to you waste time. You're going to waste time. I don't that. care right now. Okay. Oh my God. 
we're going to do this the right way. If we're going to do this, we're going to do it the right way. Okay? Okay. So uh, I don't have Jeopardy music or anything like that to play while you, while you search for this link. Okay, don't worry. Unfortunately. Um, don't worry. Somebody said no, it's blurry. All right, exactly. So maybe that That's what I'm trying to tell you. That wasn't. All right, well, then you need to hurry up and get this link. This guy too is going to rush me, and he put some damn. No, man, it's like it says viewer retention. It's like if I'm watching this, I don't want to, you know. What well, I'm then, saying? Then, like, then, then you miss you miss the gems. Then no, there's a lot of gems. No, I know exactly. I'm gonna just trim this part out after. That's what I'm gonna do. No, you're not gonna trim nothing now. We're gonna like to you. see. This is this is why it's good to be prepared, right? This is exactly why it's good to be prepared. This is why I'm big on preparation. Well, you who told you put some stupid ass little uh, well, this picture? Is why we spend time who, who trying to plan who things you before. Put this little stupid you thing. Know? Check the text message and pull up the website, bro. Okay. Come on, I'll check the text message now. Like, All pull right. up the website so the people can really get some education here because uh -huh. I don't know what picture you put up here. Yeah, yeah. no, it's okay. It's we blame right. it. We Tooks, only spoke and about it before, and you were like, "I don't want to." We blame it. We blame it. All right. Uh, okay. Go to the website. Did they see all of this? Um, not yet. Not all right, yet. Now, scroll down. Hold on. Scroll down. Where now, am I scrolling to? Scroll down where it says, um, can you make that big bigger? You see, um, that's the loan estimate right there. Because yeah. you can scroll through it and everything. I can show this page if you want. but Yeah, they can probably see that. All right, guys. We're going to yeah, share the screen. <laughs> we're going to share the screen again. Um, and hopefully this works. Okay, that looks can, so much better. Can you make it bigger? Uh, I, I don't the think website. I can. Make the website bigger. Yeah. So that way they can really see it on the screen. All right. Hopefully that's... that's uh, It's probably going to be blurry. Let me see how it looks. All right. Either way, just go through it. We'll put the link in the, we'll put the, link in the description. And, uh, yeah. So basically on the top right hand, it shows your loan terms, the purpose, the fixed rates. It shows everything, right? Okay. Um, it shows you if the rate was locked or not. Very important. And if it is locked, it tells you exactly how much, um, how long your rate is locked for. Matter of fact, scroll up a little bit. No, no. Scroll up, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. All right. You see where it says click loan estimate, loan estimate, this highlighted sample loan estimate right there? You see the hyperlink? Where? Right there. Sample loan estimate in the paragraph. Right there. Right there. Yeah. Click that. That's much better. Let's do it like that. Okay. And show them that. Because with the other thing on the side, I want them to really be able to see. Is that better, guys? Much better. Sense. Much better. Much better. Yeah. Zoom in some more. Uh, that's good. That's good? Okay, All nice. right. That. So, you guys, now you can see, like, the top of it, what it's looking like. Right, so you got all your loan terms and everything like that. And when you hit that rate lock, your rate is locked, and it tells you what time is locked and what day. Right. Wait, when do you get this though? Like, what do you? So you get your. So when you apply for your mortgage and you have your contract, then they send you this loan estimate, a part of all your initial disclosures. Okay. And on this loan estimate. In the beginning, and I want to make this clear, your loan estimate in the beginning is only giving you an estimate. Okay. Right? It's not giving you the final numbers. It is an estimate only. <laughs> I just want to make that clear. Okay. Okay? It is an estimate. That's why it's called loan estimate, not loan final. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> not, not loan it, final. Yeah, like okay. loan estimate. All okay? Right, cool. Because... Some people will say, oh, your fees are so high. Oh, my God. Like, this is an estimate. Yeah. Relax. Right, right. Okay? Now, if you look down, it says loan terms. It breaks down your loan amount, mm -hmm. your interest rate, your monthly principal and interest payment. Your principal and interest payment is what's being paid to the mortgage company. Okay. Now, you see that in, in the middle, it says, do you have a prepayment penalty? If you did, like this example does, it shows you when that people, how much it is and when it expires. Um, if you have... Um, PMI, you see in the second that principal that projected payments mm -hmm. bucket. It shows you how long you're gonna have the PMI for, and then what the mortgage payment could look like once that PMI drops off. Right. It shows you what your monthly escrow payment is. But I want to stop right there real quick because I want to let everybody know your escrow payment is always going to increase. So when you get a 30-year fixed rate mortgage, guys, your mortgage payment, principal, and interest is what's fixed. 
your print your your property taxes and your homeowners insurance can increase annually okay. or decrease or decrease which will in turn make your mortgage payment higher or lower every every year basically okay cuz if home prices keep rising then property taxes rise along with it right so pay attention to your statements that come in the mail okay after you close on your house because it will tell you it will give you what's called the escrow analysis and that escrow analysis will tell you what the projected taxes are moving from year to year what's in, what's in, real quick just definition of an escrow Escrow is basically an account that the bank uses to pay your, your property taxes and your homeowner's insurance. Okay, cool. All right? Got it. So, y'all got that in, in chat? Yeah, understand escrow a little bit better? Okay, thank you. So, now you have closing costs, and it tells you your estimated closing costs and estimated cash to close. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, scroll down. Let's go to page two. This is the most. This is a very important page. Now, this is breaking down all your closing fees. Now, the lender only controls Block A. Block A. Block A. Okay. Type in chat. Lender only controls Block A. Lender only controls Block A. We do not control all these other fees up here. The only thing we control is our origination charges. Anything that's listed in that Block A. All these other fees are third-party fees. So that's why it's an estimate. Because we don't know who your title company is until you tell us and we order title and they send us what's called a title bill. And then when they give us the title bill, we update these loan estimates accordingly to what their fees are. Okay. We don't know, depending on when you're going to close, how much of an escrow we might have to set up. So we will give you higher numbers in the beginning in a process and then once we get the title bills and everything we have a set closing date then we update everything right right so your loan estimate guys will break down all your fees in the beginning of the process but remember these things are subject to change depending on the deal mm -hmm. and what happens during the deal and as anytime anything changes on this initial estimate the lender has to redisclose to you what those changes are with the new fees. So you're not going to be in the dark. You're going right. to know because you're going to get disclosures, disclosures all the time, actually for your signature during your whole process. So that's why it's very important that you guys pay attention to your emails that you're getting and when you're in the process and you're looking at the stuff because too many times people just sign and don't know what they're looking at and then right. they wait for the end when you get your closing disclosures Mm -hmm. which those are the final numbers. And they're like, wait a minute, my cost went up 10000 Well, yeah, we sent it to you. We told you. <laughs> but you ain't paying attention. Right. You know what I'm saying? So closing costs, again, it's 5% on average. Could be less, could be more. Now, your seller's concession will be listed on here too. Um, so if you scroll up a little bit to the bottom of page two, right? Like you see what it says, all the total costs in that yeah, box right on there. The right, I and J. Yep. So now you see is seller had, credits. Is exactly. So you whatever money you put down, your good faith deposit, when you signed your contract, yeah. if you get in a seller's concession, everything would be broken down right here and then boom, it will spit out what your final number is, what you need to bring to closer. Cool. Okay. That's so we're done with this uh this uh this slide. Well, do you understand closing costs, Tooks, and, uh, and how to and how, to, uh, and how to actually look have, at your loan estimates? Yeah, I have I have a few questions. So I we'll questions. That. Hopefully, it's, these overlays don't pop up again. All right. So, um, you go find a house that you want, right? And then you go to. So, what's the process? Because we're, we're speaking, we're going through the flow of this. But like, mm -hmm. let's say if I find a crib on Zillow, what's my next step to do? I have to go find somebody like yourself to get me the crib to get a loan. Right? Yeah. Okay. And then when and what step do I get the loan estimate? So you get a loan. So, all right. Let me break this down to you too. Because too many times people, they get pre-approved and they say, let me see a loan estimate. Right. Right. Unless I, I'm not giving you a loan estimate on pre-approval. Maybe you get a closing cost worksheet. Okay. Right. Because you just, you just want to know an idea right. of what your fees are going to look like, costs yeah. and stuff like that. 
So you'll get a closing cost worksheet during your pre-approval stage. Mm -hmm. For me, when you now sign your contract and you go into a deal, that's when we do the disclosures and we do all the loan estimates at that time. And then you, you get your loan estimate. And then that's when you have your conversation with your lender about whether you the good, the bad, the ugly. And you mentioned title company. When does that come into? So maybe we need to do some title episodes um, because we haven't really speak. No one really speaks about title and the whole title report yeah. and stuff like that. But title is typically ordered in New York because New York is an attorney state. So that means you have an attorney representing you and that attorney will typically order the title. Okay. But in the states like Georgia where the realtors are handling the contracts, they will choose who the settlement companies are and the title companies are, right? Um, but I will tell you, and I will tell everybody watching this, you are the boss. You can order from whatever title company you choose to. Mm -hmm. You just have to know you can, and most people right. don't know that they can. So the title is very important. It shows the, basically the history of the house. Like if there's any um, judgments, if there's anything on there that can um, hurt your investment and the bank's investment into buying this property. Right. Right. Um, so, yeah, the title report is very important. We can't close without a title report, but we'll do some title content so people really have a full understanding of title. Good question. Write that down so we won't forget because I'm going to forget. <laughs> okay. So, cool. Um, next question is, um, now you have money, right? So, you want to get the house. What steps do I need to take to, to show that I actually have this money or how, that I actually have this income? Let's say if I make 80K a year or whatever it is, how do I make sure that the bank knows that I make that? You provide your documents. So, what documents? So, that's the question? Well, what, this isn't. This is the next. This is the next step for yeah. Proof okay. Of funds. So what? So what documents that you need to get pre-approved? What proof of funds? Yes. Proof of funds. All right. So documents and proof of funds are two different things. Well, that's why you you just said documents. No, because <laughs> you said because you asked a question. I said yeah. you submit your documents, right? What, what documents? Do I got. Okay, submit? but you just said proof of funds, and that's why I said documents and proof of funds are two different things. Okay. So explain. Okay. So documents <laughs> you need is your W-2s, your tax returns, your pay stubs, you know, last two months bank statements. Okay. Et cetera. So the lender can see. Last, you said. Last, last two months, two of, months bank of bank statements. statements right. Okay. All pages of your bank statements. And that's for W-2. Or and self-employed. And self-employed. Okay. W-2s, last two years of W-2s. If you're self-employed, last two years of tax returns. If you're W-2, then you don't really need to provide tax okay. returns. But some lenders will still make you um, submit the tax returns. Uh, you need 30 days of pay stubs. If you're self-employed, then you probably don't pay yourself in pay stubs, right? So you don't need that. But most importantly, is last two months of your bank statements. Where's the money? Show the money. You know what I'm saying? And that's bank statements shows proof of funds, whether it's a 401k, whether it's a brokerage account, whether it's your checkings and savings, wherever that money is, that is the proof of funds. Show us your money. Now, you submit all of this, mm -hmm. your, under, your loan officer reviews everything, and then they're, they're going to issue you a pre-approval letter. Now, once you have that pre-approval letter, you can go out and shop. And that's what most realtors want to see um, when you're in the marketplace. It's just that you've been pre-approved and it's a viable pre-approval. Right. So, uh, I mean, a realtor is not going to waste or want to waste their time unless you have that, basically, because you yeah, can go you don't. You don't want to waste your time. Right. Forget the realtors. I mean, a lot of people do that with other things like cars. You know, they, they well, just this ain't no car play, boy. Right. So I'm just, I'm saying so, but yeah. you, you don't know if you're looking for a house, you might just, you know, you might not know these things. So you might just want to go look for a house and not even have that step done before. Well, that's why you need to be tuned into MG The Mortgage Guy <laughs> show every day. And you'll learn these things that you don't even play yourself and go shopping without having a pre-approved letter. Right. Now, you know exactly what you can approve for and what you can really afford. If you really do a, a, a solid analysis of your financial profile. And then you move on from there. You go shopping. So now the rates for FHA, are they um, like better than other products, loan products? or Is FHA better than other loan products? In terms of the rates, like do you get the, the best rates? So rate? now in terms of interest rates, yes. Good question. So interest rates, yes. You have typically FHA comes with lower interest rates because okay. you don't have all those LLPAs. Remember we discussed right. LLPAs? Well, FHA don't have all of that. 
Okay. Right. They don't penalize you for low credit scores because this is a low credit score type of program. Gotcha. Right. So, yes, typically you'll have like so if the conventional rate is for eight one borrowers, six and a quarter percent today, FHA will probably be five and a half to five point seven five, depending on the lender. So it might be a quarter to three quarters of a point lower, depending on the lender. Right. So, okay. yes, you will get better interest rates um, with an FHA loan. Now, if you if, have good credit scores. If you have good credit scores. Correct. Now, what about insurance? Um, I, this is the one thing I really don't get I get with, like, this whole process is the insurance part. Okay. Um, I hear PMI a lot, but I don't even know what that what that even means. And it, how important is this when you're actually going to buy a house? So, FHA requires, has two insurance Premiums. First of all, PMI is private mortgage insurance. You have to have this? Listen. <laughs> okay. As I hear all the time. Yeah, yes. Okay. PMI is typically with conventional mortgages. Got you. Private mortgage insurance. Right? If you put down less than 20% or the conventional mortgage, then yes, you'll have PMI. Okay. Right? With FHA, it has MIP, mortgage insurance premium. Same thing, different Different word, terminology. Right, yeah. different terminology. So MIP versus PMI, pretty much the same thing. Now, at FHA, they have two MIP fees that they're charging you. One is the upfront MIP. That's 1.75% of your loan amount. Okay. And that gets financed into the loan. Okay. So, for example, if you got $100,000, right, times 1.75%, do your math, y'all, 100,000 times 1.75%. How much is your PMI? Your, your upfront MIP. Type it in chat. $100,000 mm-hmm. times 1.75%. How much is your upfront mortgage insurance premium? Type it in chat. Do, 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 one point seven five percent. How much is your upfront mortgage insurance premium? While y'all figuring this out, please go like the video. Also, <laughs> it's almost four hundred in y'all here. We got one answer in here so far. I, I'm seeing wrong answers. Okay, seventeen fifty, exactly. Yeah. So that's your upfront mortgage insurance premium. Okay. Right. That you that it gets financed into your loan. Now. People always ask me, should I finance it or pay it in cash? Just finance it because the difference in monthly payment is nothing. So I'd rather you remember, you do a million-dollar loan times 1.75%, that's 17500 Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that fee, it gets more expensive the bigger your loan amount. Okay. So you're better off financing it because the difference in payment is like $10. Like, right. I'd rather have my money. Right. Right? And then you have your monthly MIP. Your monthly MIP is now 0.85 percent right so if you do now if you do a three let's just say i'm gonna use five hundred thousand for this one you got a five hundred thousand dollar loan times 0.85 percent that comes up to 4250 now you divide that by 12 that gives you 354 dollar a month mip that you have to pay so loan amount times 0.85 mm-hmm. That gives you the annual number. Do you divide that by twelve? That gives you the monthly number right. of what your PMI is, and that is for the life of the loan. If you put down less than ten percent with FHA, if if you put down less than ten percent, correct. Okay. If you put ten percent or more down, then that PMI, the MIP, goes away year eleven. Okay. Okay, I got that. I got that. You understand that. I, I get that, yeah. Do y'all understand this? I understand that now. Please, tell me if y'all understand <laughs> Right? Because, again, this is probably probably the cons of FHA is that PMI. Right. That PMI, 10 plus years or life of the loan sucks. Because now you got to look at $354 right. a month. Let's just say you stay in this for, you know, 120 months. That's 42500 is it more concerning with higher loan limits, though? Oh, it's high. If you, that was a five hundred thousand we just did, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. imagine the million is double that, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right. 
it, it gets it, it gets pricey. This is part of your mor monthly mortgage payment now. So this is why people will look at FHA as a con because of the fact of your PMI. But I look at it like this. You still got a low rate. Can you afford the payment? And at some point, you're probably going to refinance out of your FHA anyway at some point. Right. So I always look at PMI or even MIP as a short-term lending solution, right? It's there to give us the ability to do these loans with low down payment. Right. So you got to really start asking yourself, if you're buying yourself a $500,000 house, do you have a hundred k for 20% down payment plus closing costs? No. Probably not, yeah. Probably not. So it's better to have the PMI, and and I pay them for a couple years, and then I'm going to refinance out, out of it, yeah. and I'm going to dip out of this joint. Yeah. I'm OPM in my life away. So PMI is not the devil, ladies and gentlemen. It's a tool also that allows you to build wealth for real estate with using as little as your money out of pocket as possible. But this is why you have to understand this math so you can go out here and execute at a high level. I always heard you say that PMI is not the devil, and I was like, I don't even know what he's talking about. Now I get it. Yeah. <laughs> so now what's the difference? Not what's the difference, but like why would you want to use – Um, well, you kind of explained that just now. But like FHA versus conventional, like if you get approved for either or, which one would you – you know what I'm saying? Like which one is a better tool to go with? Up front. F FHA versus conventional? Yeah, like why would somebody want to go with a, a conventional loan as opposed to FHA? It depends, right? Different strokes for different folks, number one, right? Everybody's circumstance is different. Right. Some people might just have the money and just or want to go conventional, right? Most people go FHA because maybe higher debt-to-income ratios, low credit scores they might have, mm -hmm. and, and capital. They may not have a lot of funds, right? right? They w may want to buy a multifamily. I think FHA is probably one of the best tools out there to buy multifamilies because you can do a 3.5% down right? up to a four family, right? With conventional, you can't unless you go with like um, home style or home ready programs. I think which one of them you can do like 5% down. I think it's home style. No. Yeah, yeah. I think it's home style. I can't remember if I But no, it's home possible. Matter of fact, home possible, you can do less with mm -hmm. Freddie Mac. But that's a reason why people will go FHA over conventional is for those circumstances that I just mentioned. Now, there are people out here that don't even want to hear the words FHA. Right. They only want conventional because that's just what they want, and that's their preference, and especially if you're buying a single-family home. It's like, I don't really need to go FHA if I don't have, if I have good credit, if I have down payment monies. Like, I really don't need to go FHA. I can go conventional put 5% down, put 10% down, and call it a day. Like when I brought Garland Gardens, I did that conventional. 10% down. 10% down. It has PMI on it. Mm -hmm. But my PMI, honestly, I can once I'm done, I'm going to remove it. You know what I'm saying? Because right. it's going to have so much equity in the house. The house got mad equity in it right now. Um, so that's why, like for me, I wouldn't dare do an FHA loan for myself at this point in my life. Because there's no reason for me to do it. But if I had to, I would do FHA all day. It seems like the pattern with real estate or anything is like use as little money as possible and use OPM. That's the, like that's the pattern of life. That's the pattern, <laughs> that's the pattern of life. It's like don't use, you know, try to hold on to your money. And, you know, that's what it seems like. I try to I try to do things only with new money or other people's money. Yeah. Not my old money. I want to keep that. So, like, when you do stuff, you should always have that. That, that mindset is like, how can I use your money versus mine? Because I want to keep mine. Right. Not all cases that work out that way, but you should be thinking like that. That's a fact. Well, um, I think that was pretty much that was pretty much it. I kind of wanted to go through it. You kind of walked through it already, so we don't really need to go through a whole walkthrough of actually purchasing Now, as far as speed is concerned, so somebody had a good question in here. Is it quicker? If you got a good loan officer, it doesn't matter what loan you're going to get. You're going to mm -hmm. close fast, right? I've closed FHA loans in two weeks, and I've closed conventional loans in two weeks. It doesn't matter. It's all on you. You wanted to go quicker? How you ish together? Yeah. <laughs> when people don't have their stuff together is when it doesn't go as fast as it should be, right? So if you want to close fast, you got to be together, man. 
you can't expect the bank. It's it's always not the bank's fault. Right. It's like, it's you. It's your paperwork. It's your documents. It's your profile. And yes, sometimes it could be the loan officer mistake. It could be the underwriters being a pain. That does happen. But for the most part, when I see challenging loans, it's not us. It's the borrower's profile of what they're presenting. So have your ducks in a row. Have your ish together before you go out here and try to apply. So that way you can go out here and close in a timely matter. And it don't matter what loan program you use. A good loan officer is going to close, baby. We're going to get that thing done. Period. So, well, we won't go through a whole process of that. But, like, let's say if you're looking for a house right now, let's say if the house is $500,000 in today's market, um, what should you prepare yourself for in terms of money to have down? Why somebody tell us turn up the volume? I don't know. I, the volume thing, I'm kind of, we, we've been through the volume thing, but. Yeah, like, come on, bro. There's <laughs> nothing wrong with the volume. Turn up your volume, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a little there's a little button or two buttons on the side. You can just hit yeah, the Yeah, he's in the back of the class. Um, Yeah, so. Hey, let's say if a house is five hundred thousand dollars, right? We'll get to the questions in a second. Mm-hmm. How much money should I have? Ten percent. Ten percent of five hundred thousand. Fifty. That's with clo- that's with closing. That's costs. with down payment closing costs because you got three point five plus another five in closing. That's eight point five. Round that up. Call it ten percent. Ten percent. Yeah. Okay. It's a good number. I would probably say you should have a lot more than that. Right. Because you got to have reserves. Even if the bank don't require reserves, you should have them three to four months of your mortgage payments that you ain't got to never touch and live off of is there. But wouldn't that money just be the money you're going to use to put down anyways? No. Reserves is post-closing. Reserves is after I spend my my 50K to buy this house, yeah. I still got another 20 left over because I got to cover my mortgage for emergency funds. Okay, got you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you got to have money, man. You can't be buying real estate with no money. Cool. Okay. That's just my thought process. Being broke ain't cool. <laughs> no, being, being broke is actually doing yourself a tremendous disservice. Yeah. When you're doing, when you're broke, you can't enjoy life the way you need to. I mean, it's tough for some people out there. No, right? it's. I'm not talking about it's tough for people. This is a, yeah. that's these are different conversations. It's like what we were talking about the other day, and we were talking about income is hundred k, a lot of money, yeah. and it's not <laughs> a lot of money. And people are like, well, if you live here, th- that's not the conversation if you live somewhere. Like, or could you live comfortable? That's not the conversation. The conversation was, is 100K a lot of money? Is broke being cool? No. It sucks. No, it does suck. Like, yeah, it, sucks. it sucks. Whether you're going through it or not, yeah. being broke sucks. And if you're buying real estate, you should never put yourself in a position to be broke. Right. Because it sucks. Now you have a responsibility. Don't people want their money? That mail come out. Yo, my mortgage statements for February come mid-January. They want their money. <laughs> They're not playing around. Yeah. You're getting 15 days prior to the first. And then you're going to get, if your joint ain't paid, they're going to call you and say, where's my money? They're going to yeah. email you. Where's my money? You haven't paid yet. Is there a problem? <laughs> <laughs> being broke ain't cool bro yeah no I don't care what you going through I've been through so much when I was broke and I'm telling you it was the worst your mental's all messed up like you don't want to go do nothing you can't afford to do nothing then your mentality gets all messed up and then if you buying houses and you broke if something break you screwed yeah it's stressful don't be house rich and cash poor people so you want to answer some questions? Do whatever you want to do. All right, yeah. I think um, that was I'm, pretty I'm solid. I'm over here drinking my water. <laughs> so Make sure asked... y'all like, hold on. Look, apply with MG.com. My team is licensed in 21 states. If you want to close fast, if you want to work with me and my team, we'll be happy to help you. Apply with MG.com, please. You can book consultations, the whole nine yards. Work with me and my team. Okay. That was my commercial break. So I got 10% on a 500K house right now. How fast can you close? Two weeks. Two weeks. So Let's I could be, hold on, wait, wait, hold on. Let's close. No, no, no. You know what I no, tell no. my team every morning? <laughs> let's close. That's my text. That's my good morning. Let's close. Yes, let's close. Okay. So they send me stuff. <laughs> I say, cool, let's close. Everything's let's close, B. 
We're closing deals every day, B. We want to close loans. That's all I want to do. I don't want to do nothing else in life. You want to close in two weeks? I got you. Just have your ish together, and we'll work as a partnership, and we'll get you closed. Now, sometimes it might take 30 days. It might take 60 days. But we'll tell you up front, yeah. based off of your, your, your scenario, nah, this is going to take some time. Right. Like, I have people who hear me, hey, I want to do 200000 in rehab with an FHA 203K. Well, that sounds like a 45-day close to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That yeah. don't sound like a two-week close. That sounds like a 45-day close because there's a lot of moving parts with that. So every situation is different. But for the most part, two to three weeks, let's get rid of them. Is there a lot of moving parts with an FHA loan? There's a lot of moving parts on every loan. But I'm saying like other people, like you know how you're, if you're building a house, there's other contractors. You oh, no, nah, it's just the bank, the underwriter, the loan officer, really. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, But again, this is about the, the borrower profile being A1 solid, yeah. right? on how they submit in documents. The loan officer setting the proper expectations from the beginning, not mm. not when the shit already hit the fan. Right. And the loan officer actually being skilled at what they're doing to submit a clean file to the underwriting department. Because underwriters get shit sent to them all day and they gotta kick it back because the way it was presented to them. Right. So if you submit it properly the first time, an underwriter's gonna love you, look at your file like, yo, it's clean. Right. And that's the very important part of when you're working with, and this is what I need you all to understand. Not all loan officers are built alike, and I say that so respectfully. They're all not built alike. So when the underwriter gets your file, and if this loan officer has a reputation in their company of always putting in ish files, yeah. when loan officers, see, when underwriters see it, they're already rolling their eyes <laughs> because they know they're going to have to do all this extra work, piece it together, they did their income wrong. It's like, I got to do his job too or her job too on top of my job. They get tight. They're human. Yeah. And they got probably 100 loans they got to go through. And now we got to spend extra time because you a sloppy loan officer. This happens every day. Not all loan officers are built alike. So the way that loan is presented to the underwriting department, the faster it's going to get out of that department and get an approval. Right. And then you can move on. So with me and my team, our relationships with our underwriters are A1 because we know what we're doing. So when they see our loans, call and mortgage group, they smile. Because they know it's going to be together and it's going to close. You got to think about it. how many loans go in that don't close. Yeah. That don't close. Now you're doing all this work and nothing's closing. It's frustrating. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, again, choose... Pick your poison of who you're going to hire as your lender. Because it's not, it's not the lender, it's the person, it's that loan officer. He or she has to be awesome at what they're doing. And you have to be able to interview them in a way to where you can understand that this person really know what they're doing or not. And if they do, then you go forward. If you don't, then you, you, you keep finding. But you guys don't have to look. Go to, MG, go to uh, applywithmg.com. <laughs> and we got you. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, how do you know if your loan officer isn't doesn't you know isn't knowledgeable of products or like? Because I I did see a comment before where somebody said they didn't qualify because their loan officer said something about they're not being able to do it or something like that. I'm not really sure what it was, but how do you know? Like, how do you how know? do you know? The more you know. That's that's a good answer. <laughs> the more you know is how you know. Yeah. So when you are interviewing somebody, and this goes for anything, yeah. and I use this. To practice every single day when I'm talking to people. I'll ask you questions I already know the answers to. It's very simple. I know the answer to it already. So I'm going to ask you it like I'm just playing dumb because I'm actually filling out your knowledge. Yeah, I kind of do the same. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's, the simplest, it's the simplest hack. Yeah. Ask you stuff that you know already. And yeah. then from there I can say, oh, no, I don't like the way he answered that. That's cat. Yeah. Or you're like, why it took him so long to get from point A to point B real quick? It took you 17 minutes just to say something that could have took two. <laughs> two minutes. Like, nah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, nah. Something off. Yeah. <laughs> Something's off. That's it, man. I mean, FHA seems pretty, like, you know, straight to the point. FHA so, I mean... has a negative stigma around it in the real estate world because, hey, if you have rail like no rails and no handrails or if you have peeling paint you know what i'm saying if you have health and safety issues 
it, that house won't pass FHA inspection on the appraisal. Right. Right. It might come back and say, so when you get an appraisal, you have as is or subject to repairs. As is is great, meaning you don't need no repairs done. Right. But if that appraiser comes back subject to, the appraiser will list what repairs need to be there. And then somebody got to pay for it to get done because now the appraiser has to go back out there again to view the property to make sure what they put on the report was actually taken care of. So unexperienced or inexperienced realtors who list properties and accept FHA borrowers without understanding how FHA mm -hmm. works and what an appraiser for FHA loans gonna look out for, it's gonna be a whole nightmare yeah, because of the, yeah. the lack of experience. Right. But my experience ones, they know, they'll tell you flat out, like, yo, we got this, we got this, we got this. We're going to, before this appraisal, we're going to get this paint clip, da 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 We're going to add this handrail so that way when that appraisal comes, it's clean. Boom. What if people are living in the house, though? Like, so how does that the work? The seller has to take care of it. It's part of your negotiation now. Okay, so the seller has to take care of whatever it is. Can you? I'm not paying for nothing on the house that I don't own. Right. What if they disagree? Then that's it. It's a done deal for that loan. Got to go conventional. Got to go conventional. Or go FHA two hundred three k. Okay. And get a rehab loan. There's always options. Yeah, there's always options. It's just all on who you're working with is right. what's going to make those options come to life. Drop some gems in the comment. <laughs> I just be, I just be, I be, I'm, and I'm tired too, yo. You nah, can, this is good. This you is can good. probably see it on my face. I'm, ready, nah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm drinking mad water to stay you're, up. You're right done. Now. You're done. Yeah, this is. <laughs> I'm I'm so done. Dry January has come to an end. <laughs> so I'm gonna say, what a weekend. Okay. You're done. You're done. All right. So that was good. I actually learned a lot. I'm not even gonna lie. No cap. I I definitely learned a lot this um this live for sure. Well, this um, is what I do for a living. Yeah, I mean I think that I think that I've always had these questions, but I think I wanted to do it on a live just so we have some other questions coming into it at the same time. So I need more likes on this video. That's what I'm gonna <laughs> tell y'all. Yeah, better stop playing with me and give me some more likes. How long we been on this live for? Um, we've been on here for an hour and fourteen. So we got like what, a couple more minutes, maybe five, ten minutes to answer some questions. Whatever, man. Um, somebody asked if I can ask you if you heard of a Chinoa loan. Yes. And what is it? I, I, we're not even gonna talk about that. You can't just give like a two second like, ba ba ba. It's it. it basically like a hundred percent financing. I'll just say that. Oh. Oh, it's one of those. Yeah, one of those, one of those, uh, those clout chaser loans, huh? Yeah, this is something that you probably want me to talk about. That's why I said I don't even want to talk about this shit. What's up? Dude, Let's do it. What we do it. Nah, <laughs> nah, bro. That's it's, clickbait, it, it, huh? No. <laughs> yeah, that's all you care about. Like, no, nah, I'm not talking about that. I'm not well, I mean, that. honestly, a lot of people talk about that. People have asked and commented about some type of all in. Oh, that was an all in one loan. I don't know if it's the same thing. But... I don't know what they're talking about. Okay. I ain't talking about that. <laughs> yeah, I can leave me oh out. man okay um yeah these are all okay so do you somebody said they're ready to invest do you have offices in chicago would love to work with you and your team yes we lend in chicago we don't have an office in chicago but we lend in we lend in chicago we do zoom calls all day with our people so it don't matter where the office is it's called zoom we live in a technology world. I don't need to have a brick and mortar there. Let's just do business, man. We can get on a Zoom call with my team and let's get business. And if you're a realtor who want to work with me and my team, set up a realtor partnership call. Link will be in the description too. And you can talk to my business development manager and we can talk to you how we can help you and your clients get to the closing table. So we have all the options. We do Zoom calls, FaceTimes, whatever you need. We make it like accessible and easy for you. Yeah. It's real simple. Okay, uh, this is a good question. Um, can you play? Can you <laughs> can you pay for a closing cost with a credit card? <laughs> oh my God, no, you can't. Why not? What do you mean no? You can't. We gonna swipe at the closing table? Yeah, they got they got Square. What they got? What no. else they got? Um... You can't. No. <laughs> you know why? <coughs> because a credit card is a revolving debt, right? So now you swipe that, your payment goes up. What payment? Oh. It's, it's unsecured funds in our world. Right. So can you swipe your card? No. Could you do a cash advance and deposit that money, let it sit for a couple months before you apply and use that money? Yes. Why would you want to do that, though? 
I don't know. People just like to run up more debt. That sounds like if I feel like if you're doing something like that, that sounds like a you probably shouldn't be. I mean, I don't know. I, I can't even say that. You got to look at this, right? That's and kinda... I'm, I'm a fan of using everything you have to get what you got to get in life, right? And if you're using credit, a cash advance, I'm talking about. It's still credit. Yeah, but it's more. I think it's more interest when you do something whatever like that. it is. It's still credit coming from your credit card. Yeah. Right. And now you have a balance that you have to pay back. It's more debt that you're adding to yourself. Yeah. Either which way. So just be mindful of that. Yeah. Have I had people do cash advances and use that for transactions? Absolutely. I wonder what the logic is behind that. I'm the curious. The logic I'm is really they curious, don't have though. the money and the credit card would give them the money. <laughs> That's the logic. Period. I don't have no money, man. Thank you, Amex, <laughs> for giving me my down payment. I'll pay you back monthly. And I don't care because now I can go do what I got to do. Yeah. It happens every day, B. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> all right, let's see, let's see some other questions here. Yeah, because oh, I'm getting tired. What's the downside of getting a rehab loan? Interest, money down, et cetera. Um, what? What's the downside of getting a rehab loan? Interest, money down, et cetera. It's no downside. What are you talking about? The downside. The downside. Somebody's going to give you 100% of your repair costs to fix up your ugly old house <laughs> to make it worth more than what it is. How could there be a downside? You know what I'm saying? Like, really think about it. There's no downsides in this. It's only upside if you buy right. The downside is if you don't buy right. The downside is if you over leveraging yourself the downsides is if you don't know how to analyze property the proper way to know if it's a good investment for you or not that's the downside yeah when you go through twists and turns to get these type of loans absolutely but if you already have the expectation that it's, it's going to be some some pain that comes with this then you're not going to sit here and be stressing yourself out yeah. the people who are not well researched are stressed out every day the people who come to me and they're well researched and they watch my channels and read the books and do what they have to do. They're not stressed out because they have information and they understand, hey, if I'm taking out a two or three K, this is going to be a little challenging, but I'm ready for it. I'm mentally ready for it. But downside and rehab? No, there's only upside if you do it right, in my opinion. Okay. You got to think about the world we live in. When FHA was established in 1934, there were no 30-year fixed mortgages in America at this time. There were only three year, five years, stuff like that. Yeah, but homes were like, what? It don't matter. 50 bands? They were 50 <laughs> bands, but that's like five million in today's money. It yeah, don't yeah. matter. It's all numbers. It's all relative, right? You have an opportunity to borrow money Mm -hmm. with as little as possible out of your pocket. And if you're doing a rehab, they're giving you 100% of the repair costs as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's a no-brainer. Like, like, it's a no-brainer. <laughs> the bank is putting on the line 96.5% of the 100 that's needed to close this deal. Mm -hmm. You're only putting up 3.5 of your own money? And we're talking downsides? We got the we got to chill the fuck out. <laughs> like I'm just sorry. Like downside, what? Three point five five percent, and the bank gonna give me ninety five and rehab money. What? Why are you not jumping on this? I'm just saying, and it's a potential equity play if you do it right. So I just use three and a half percent of my money to leverage myself to make a hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand in equity. What kind of, that's a flip. Yeah. So when you think about it, there's no downsides to this. The downside is you. The person you look in the mirror every day is your downside. You. Nothing else. Not the loans. Not the process. You. Period. All right. Well, uh, can you give me... <laughs> Can you give a prediction of the market for 2023 into 2024? Should we 
the prediction you know, like, of the market. Should we buy now or wait? <clears throat> I, you know what? Honestly, guys, I feel like you're probably not gonna like that answer because he is kind of spicy today. So no, no. What's the what's the question? Uh, <laughs> so what's your prediction? Um. Of the market for 2023 into 2024. Don't we have a whole Should video we? behind that? All right. So next question. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not answering questions. Oh, I have videos man. For. Go watch the videos. You got to catch up, man. Yo. Um, I got a whole short on that, too. <laughs> it's a whole short in the whole video. Breaking all it all down. I'm sorry. I'm not going to answer that one. Uh, my client. Okay. We kind of. So a lot of people are asking about the income, um, and we kind of cover that too. You have to have two years of income consistently between W2, W2, and 1099 and 1099, right? You can't go from W2 to 1099 because your clock will start over, correct? Yeah, basically. So consistent employment. Is there yeah. any other? It's W2 or 1099, or is there any, any other? Self-employed, 1099, Self-employed, so you have to be yeah. two years both. You, can, can, you yeah. cannot. Um, Pretty much. Uh, no, nah, I'm not. I'm not scared to ask the questions. I just don't want you know. They said. They said. They said you're scared. I'm not scared to ask no questions. It's just <laughs> I don't want people to feel like you. You know, you're getting a little spicy with them. That's why I'm drinking a lot of water right now to stay hydrated off the foolishness. Yeah, I mean, I asked the question. I know it's gonna piss you off, so that's why I asked it sometimes. <laughs> that question that pissed me off is just like I'm not answering it. Well, I know you spoke about it already, mad time. So, um. Let me see. We got what else we got in here? Um, I'm self-employed and write off and write off a lot of my income and just bought a rental prop property with DSCR. Should I This is an FHA call. Oh. You can't you can't then you get me into a whole nother topic of this video. Gotcha. You have videos on that too. All right, guys. Well, if you guys don't have any other FHA related questions, <laughs> yeah. Can we, let, look, class, please, class, <laughs> All right, class. It's Professor MG talking to y'all. When we are in these sessions, please only ask questions that are pertaining to the particular topic, so we can keep it all in the same video. When you start asking me about different things, like it throws off the video. So let's keep it on topic, please. Thank you very much. Okay. You got, how long have we been on this? Uh, 90 minutes yeah, now? Yeah, we could, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really have any more questions. I think I asked all the questions. So basically, in my head, <clears throat> 10%, make sure you come with 10% um, if you want to use an FHA loan, correct? Correct. 10%. Anything else? And Oh, and credit. You need to have your credit right, right? You got to have your credit right. You got to have money. Yeah. Now, if you get sales concessions and everything like that, that's great. But you want to still have your own money. Cool. Solid. Okay, like, comment, share, subscribe, download MG the Mortgage Guy show anywhere you listen to podcasts. Tooks, when is this audio going up? Did you put up the audio from last week's shows? I put up the business credit. We have a bunch of audio that was already up there. Oh my god, before. yo! So, this yo, there's guy. a lot of content, man. A lot of content. Bro, last a week lot. you said you was putting up the lives last week, and you didn't. Wait, what lives? We did lives last week, bro. Yeah, but you said Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Okay. We can't put. I mean, we have a lot of content, so we can't just. Okay, put up. look, it's on. It's on talk, y'all. Y'all don't see the audios up there. That's on him. This is audio right now, but they can rerun this if they want to. That's a fact. YouTube. All right, let me tell y'all where I'm gonna be at. I'm gonna be in Baltimore this Thursday. Uh, I'm gonna put the link in the description. Make sure you guys come check me at Security Square Mall Shoe Shoe City. All right, Security Square Mall Shoe City. Uh, from 4 to 7 p.m. Uh, it's the new SMU, New Balance release event. I'm talking real estate. I'm going to have come with some of my local people there, too, that do real estate. I'm not going to tell you all who they're going to be, but they're going to be some really good people there in the building. Um, it's, you have the RSVP. If you're in Baltimore, the surrounding cities, Philly, Delaware, D.C., anywhere in Maryland, pull up on me at the Security Square Mall, Shoe City, um, event from 4 to 7 p.m. All right, um, mgbookstore.com. You already know the vibes, go buy the books. And then I might bring some books with me Thursday too. So if you come, maybe I'll, I'll do some signed books while I'm out there as well. And um, 
If you want to work with me and my team, very important. If you want to work with me and my team, if you're a realtor, you can set up a partnership call with uh, my business development manager. If you're a home buyer, investor, uh, first time home buyer, you want to refinance, whatever it is, we would love to help you. We're in 21 states. You can go to plywoodmg.com or you just click the description of this video. You'll see links for consultations and to apply and for the realtor partnership call. All right. That's all I got. Talks you good. Yeah, somebody said something though I wanted to touch on real quick. Oh my God, bro. Nah, I just, because I, this is what I was saying before. Somebody said, um, a question is a question. No one knows it all, especially about this topic. Otherwise, y'all wouldn't be on here, period. That's a fact. I agree. Oh, I like that one. Who said that? Um, I don't, bang out 456. <laughs> Shout out to bang out 456. All mm. right. That is a fact. I do agree. Um, but I don't know how that was said. I don't know if it was said in kind of like a, a salty kind of way, but either way, that's a Bang fact. Out said what he said. Yeah, that's, that's all fact. that matters. So that's why he I stuck. Like... It, it looked like he got on. He got caps or no? Yeah. Oh, then he he stuck out his chest yeah. with this one. So uh, yeah, don't be scared to ask questions, guys. Um, I'm asking these questions uh, for myself on camera. So um, you know, don't be scared to be the dumbest in the room because I always feel that way when it comes to real estate. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Those are my closing words. Ladies and gentlemen, MG The Mortgage Guy Show is a wrap. Thank you guys for joining. We will be live tomorrow as well. Um, is Jordana going to be here tomorrow? She's not coming in all week. Oh, okay. So She's Jordana... Her, yeah, we can't... Forget. Yeah, yeah. So Jordana <laughs> will not be on the show tomorrow or Friday. Um, it'll just be me and Tooks. Uh, Friday, we got a special guest. Maybe we need to find somebody who can sit on in this chair with us tomorrow then to replace Jordana. she be like a kind of... Uh, special tomorrow. No, nah, man. Let's leave it, Jordan. Nah, we can't do that. I mean, she ain't here, so we need to fill the seat. Well, I think I think we're both fine. And the... yeah, but I like the three three the hard way shit. It gives a different perspective on these conversations. So who are you gonna bring in? I don't know. I'll think about it tonight. Somebody local. <sighs> All right, we'll figure it out. <laughs> I don't know. About that. <laughs> I have no clue, but I'm gonna figure it out. We're gonna have a special guest tomorrow too. Who knows? Okay. All right, tap in tomorrow. Uh, Probably 4 o'clock, hopefully. And, um, yeah, like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. All right, I got to go. Peace. Peace.